Hey everybody, Robert Jones, back in the kitchen. Woo, excited. It is manly craft night here in the kitchen, and I and my friends are making beer. This is some uh, malt extract that we're going to be using here in a second. We're going to be brewing up five gallons of a porter tonight. It's going to be extra special. It's got some dark roasted grains. It's got some coffee. We're even sticking in some wood sticks to give it some extra barrel flavor since we don't actually have a wooden barrel. So hang with us. Go through the process. I hope you guys enjoyed the wine one last time. If you haven't seen that one, check down below and I'll put the link there. But let's get brewing. Alright you guys, we got hot water going in the sink here. And then we're going to add an additive, which is to help sanitize everything. Go for it. It's black. It's ooky. Please read the bottles, find out what your sanitation stuff says, and follow the instructions. Alright you guys, in our sterilization bath here, we have a hydrometer. We have a thermometer. Those are both going in there. A couple seconds. We've also got a funnel, a cheesecloth, a spoon for mixing in our pot, a rubber scraper, some hose, a plastic tube, and a strainer. And one last thing, a big giant colander. So we're just going to sterilize all this and then we're going to get our water boiling to do the next cooking process. I know this is very glamorous. Okay, so over here we have two pots. We have a big pot, which is a two gallon, and we have another pot, which is another gallon. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring two pots of water to boil. We're going to bring up one gallon in each pot. This one is going to be our main brew, and this one is going to be steeping the special ingredient, which is the toasted oats and coffee and goodness. And then this one's going to be where we put the malt extract, and then eventually they're going to get together and have a baby. No, they're eventually going to get together, and then they'll be poured into the, the big jug once we're making the wort. So, for right now, let's dump some water. Oh, by the way, we are using specially distilled uh, drinking water with low minerals so that the true beer flavor is not imparted. If you have good tap water, I suppose you can do that, but um, mine's soft. So, okay, we're going to crank this up and we'll show you the next steps in a bit. Okay, you guys, our water has come to 150 degrees, which is what they're telling us at. Now we have a mixture here, and this is a mixture of barley and cocoa nibs and coffee grounds. So it might be a little hard to see, but it's all in there. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to make a big giant batch of coffee. Let's get back. We're going to put it all in here. Go for it. And let this brew for 20 to 30 minutes. This is going to be the special additives and what's is going to give us uh, our nice dark flavor. As you can imagine, coffee roasted and barley roasted and coffee and what's the thing I'm missing? Cocoa are going to make quite a big batch of tea. So it's going to look like the woman's club here with a big giant batch of uh, percolated tea. So we're just going to stir this a little bit and then we're going to put the lid on and we're going to let it brew for about 20 to 30 minutes. Probably closer to 30. Okay, we've got our other pot here, which has also come to about 150 degrees. And then we've got three of these. And this is called CBW Traditional Dark Pure Malt Extract. Basically, this is the sugar that has been extracted from the malt. And it uh, requires us to not have to do the whole process of going through that. So we're just going to put this in there. It's a dark consistency. Got one that's open here so you guys can see it. It's very dark, thick, and gooey. If you watched the Chinese video the other day with the Peking duck, this is the same stuff. It's just a different color and it's got the roast. And so we're going to put nine pounds of it, this goes by weight, into this water and let it dissolve. And this will be part two. All right, so we're going to add three of these and we'll see you in a minute. You can see how long and stringy. All right, you guys, we got all kinds of stuff cooking. We've got our, our malt cooking over here. Um, this pot is going to be for our tea, which is here and it's done. So now we're gonna put it in here. We're gonna strain it in there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take this off and show you guys what it looks like. It looks like a big pot of tea. So then what we're gonna do, we're gonna cheat a little bit. 
Okay, so basically what we're going to do is we've got our strainer here with the cheesecloth, and then we've got another strainer here. So we're going to set this in here, and we're going to pour the tea through this and catch all the big parts, and then this will catch the little parts. Okay, pause. Okay, so then we're just going to let this drain and we're going to put this in the compost bin. Or I guess we can keep pouring because we've got to rinse it again. Too. Okay, I'm sorry, I lied. We're going to keep pouring because we're going to rinse this one more time with, with cold water. Okay, stop. Pour the liquid again. Just pouring the liquid out of it. Okay, good. Stop, stop, stop. Okay, so now we're going to add another gallon of water, or half a gallon of water, to the to the grounds. So we're basically getting all the juice out of here. And then we're going to mix a half a gallon of water in there just to get all the flavor just to get all the extra flavor out of this. You paid for it, might as well get the flavor out of it. Alright, this time we can pour all the way through and get rid of the grounds. Oh, there's our alarm. It must be on schedule. And again, I'm just letting this drip. Okay, we'll put that in the garden. Extra flavor. Now, cheesecloth is getting all the smaller particles. So, this is a pretty fine mesh. Now, you can do it any way you want. You can put this in the cheesecloth, you can put this in a sock, you can do that. I think we're just doing this because it's easy for us. And that's what we have available. Getting all the goodness. This smells so good, you guys. You can smell the cocoa, you can smell the burntness of the malt that was roasted, and you can also smell the coffee. It's like a big old giant espresso. Alright, so now we're going to take our cheesecloth out of here and you guys can see what's going to be left. Oops. So when I hold up the cheesecloth, you'll see all clean and shiny. So it'll be a nice clean brew here. Okay, you guys, we've got our malty stuff here, and then we're going to pour as much as we can this in to our big pot. Not to worry, we will use the rest of this. We're just going to put it in the, the, the vessel. And it just made a big mess. Okay, so now we're going to bring this to a boil, and then we're going to throw our hops in there. Okay, we've reached a boil, as you can see here. So now it is time to pitch the hops. Lovely assistant, please pitch the hops. This is Nugget Alpha 13.5 Beta 4.5 Aroma Mild Herbal, Herbal and Pleasant Typical Beer Styles Ale Stout Barley Wine 1 ounce Hop Pellets. Pitching the hops. Okay, and then the next one is called U.S. Golding Alpha 4.9 Beta 2.3 Mild Delicate English Type Aroma for English Style Ales, Barley, Wine, Pale Ale, Belgian Ales, 1 ounce Hot Pellets. Lovely assistant. We're doing it a bit early, but oh well. No. Now we're going to wait about 45 minutes for the first hops to settle in and mellow, and then we'll put in the second hops. All right, you guys, we are now doing the U.S. Golding Alpha 4.9% Beta 2.3 Aroma Mild Delicate English Type Typical Beer Styles English Style 
barley wine pale ale belgian style ales Woo! going in pitch it let's see and then how long does this this go and then we're gonna let this in there for 15 minutes ba -ba! Okay, we have done all of the brewing, all of the hopsing, all of everything. So now we have our, we have a five gallon jug here and just a funnel. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the last bit of the brewed that was already done, the specialized, do you wanna hold the funnel? The specialized into the jar, cause it's cool. You guys can see it's very chocolatey. There's that one. And just because this pot is really big, I'm gonna use a little pot just to dip it out little by little here. Okay, we got it all in there. Now we are going to add enough water to bring this jug to almost full. And it's also important to make sure that we uh, keep it sanitary so this is a brand new bottle of water. So there we go. We've got it filled up to the to the bottom of the neck here. We don't want to go too far because as this brews, a lot of foam is going to come out of here. So the next thing we need to do is we need to mix this and we need to put in the wood stick, which is going to be the simulated barrel flavor. Oh, and we also need to put in the yeast. Okay, so we're thinking this is a little bit warm. Um, so we're going to test the temperature. Yeah, it's warm down there at the bottom. We're going to let this cool down. It has to get down to 75 degrees before we put the yeast in it. So that'll be the next step. Oh, here goes the wood stick, which is going to be the... Uh, let me just show the camera. This is a piece of wood. It's actually from an old barrel that they... Um, it has flavor to it. And so since the beer is not going to be in a barrel, they put this in it and it gives it the wood flavor. What uh, flavor of wood are we putting in here? This is North American oak. This is a piece of North American oak in a medium roast. It's called beer sticks. All right, we're going to let this get down to 75 and then we will pitch the yeast. Good morning everybody. It is the next morning. We let our beer solution cool overnight because it was way too hot and it wasn't coming down in temperature last night so we were tired so it's okay. It is. We sealed it up. You got it here. So what we did is we put the cork in. We sterilized cork and the pipe in the in the tube which is what we're going to do after we put the yeast in. We didn't know if it was going to have any reaction last night. We didn't want it to have any contamination so we've got this. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take the cork out and then we're going to take the temperature just to be sure. It should be fine but just to be just to be doubly sure. Seventy-eight. All right. Our temperature appears to be about 78 degrees, so it's perfectly fine. So we're going to pitch the yeast next. Okay, the yeast we are using is uh, called, let's see, it is a Pilsner Lager Yeast WLP800, um, best before June, and apparently it's from San Diego. It is from the White Labs 
of San Diego. So what we're going to do is you're going to get your yeast like this and sometimes it's thick at one end. We already shook this but you want to make sure you shake it all up so you can see all the way through the, the plastic tube and then we're going to what do you call, call pitching this. Pitchmeister. Would you like to pitch? And in goes the yeast. There we go. All right, we're going to bottle this back up. We're going to put the tube back in, and we will see you in two weeks. Okay, totally forgot to do something. So we got the yeast in there, and now we're going to use the hydrometer, which is this little tool here, and we're going to drop it in the tube. We're going to find out what is our specific weight. And it appears to be 1.08, which should yield us, according to this, about 10, 10 to 12 percent alcohol. So that's how this works. It's worth the investment to get this little doohickey. And what we're doing is we're just reading the numbers here, and it says right there, 10 percent. And on this side, the specific gravity is 1.08. Oh, eight, as it floats. Okay, now I think we've got it all. See you in two weeks. All right, you guys, it's been about 24 hours, maybe a little bit more, maybe 36 hours, 30 hours, since we put the yeast in the beer. And I just wanted to show you, it is foaming. Let's see if we can do a little zoom in here. You can see the yeast bubbling away. And then down here where we have our tube, you can see the gas is coming out. It is alive! Okay guys, what we have over here is we have a whole selection of our bottles that are going to get sanitized now. We've got big one liter glass bottles. These suckers are quite large. Then we've also found that these power drink bottles, which are aluminum, have screw caps, uh, are really great. And then we have some other bottles here, just of various sizes that we use. We use uh, brand new caps on them, so you'll see those in the video. Then we have some plastic one liter bottles here, which came from a different kit, which actually work well too. And then over here we have some sugar, which is going to be added to the beer, which is going to reactivate the yeast, and that's what gives the carbonation. So I just want to give you guys a little tour of that. Over here in the sink area, you can see we have very bright lights. We have everything is being sanitized, so all the counters have been cleaned off here. Everything's been, uh, the counters have all been sanitized, the rack has been sanitized. And now we're going to use our Santa Clean, not Santa Claus, Santa Clean. We have caps down in here. We have all the, the tubing, funnels, Clorox bleach. And all of this is going to go into some water here with the bottles, and then we'll put it over here on the clean rack side. Finally, finally, over here, I just want to show you the guys, the glass that we were using as a what is it? The gas filter, I guess you could say. When the gas comes out of the bottle of beer, comes out the tubing, 
and we're using this to keep any bacteria from going back in. So it's kind of nasty, but it smells like bread or very old beer. Here's our bottle. You can see the yeast particles on the top here. We pulled the tube out, so that's actually open, but not too very long. And then way down here, we have all the yeast that's settled. So when we pump this out of here, we pump from above this to make sure we get the nice clean stuff. And then as we get toward the bottom, we're going to put it through a coffee filter just to make sure we don't waste any beer. Okay, so we're going to get set up here and then we're going to sanitize all the bottles. All right, let's get her rolling. So we got the stopper in. I'm going to fill up with some hot water here. Put our stuff and faithful assistant. This is the sandy clean going in. It looks black and yucky, but. And that's a measured amount for water. So. Okay, guys, now we're just going to do dishes. So basically, we've got all of our, our lids in here. I'm just giving them a good sandy rinse. And also, we already Cloroxed everything, so it should be sanitized. This is our hydrometer and the little tube to measure. So we're gonna tell you guys how much alcohol there is. By the way, these are great bottles. They have these auto closers on them. Old fashioned European thing. Just put it on there, snap it down. We're back over at the counter here and we move the bottles back over here. They are cleaned and disinfected as well as the funnel. Now we have just plain white sugar here. And we're going to put a specific measure. We have a tiny little measure scoop here. This is a teaspoon. We're going to put specific amounts of sugar in these bottles so that it reacts with the yeast and then it'll become pressurized and that's what gives it carbonation. For your specific bottles, whatever you're using, you're going to have to look up what it's going to be. But basically for us, it's going to be two and a half teaspoons for the big bottles, one teaspoon for the little ones, uh, two teaspoons for the medium-sized bottles. So we learned during our wine making last time that too much sugar makes a lot of carbonation. So we're going to be careful with it this time, not to make it too carbonated, but we still want nice bubbly beer. <laughs> Okay, all the sugar's in. All right, you guys, I'm gonna give you the big lay of the land here. So here's what we got. We got our big mamma jamma of beer. We've got our sterilized products. And down here, we've got our other giant bottles of beer. 
So what we're going to do now is we're going to siphon some beer out of here into go over there in the sink into this tube here, which has the hydrometer. If you guys remember the hydrometer from last time, this is the thing that measures the amount of alcohol. Well, it measures the weight of the liquid, and then we calculate the alcohol. So we're going to see how much we got. You can see the beer coming. There it is. This is also where we do a taste test. Keep going. And stop, 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 stop. And if you see on the tube here, it has a little, a little doohickey which stops the flow. So we can set that over here. Okay. So now we're looking at this in the light here, trying to find out where the, the measurement is. So we drop it, it floats. You guys can see that, I hope. And it is saying it is about, let's see if we'll set it down here. So our initial reading was at 0.08. So we're about 5% alcohol, maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less, somewhere close to that. We'll give you the final calculations at the end. Okay, so we'll take this out of here. Taste it. And we're going to give this a little taste to test it here. All right, so this has no carbonation, you guys. It's just a very thick beer. Let's see if I can show you guys. It's just a really dark, it looks like espresso. It's really dark like espresso. Want to taste? You do it first. Okay. I'm down here and giving it a taste. Ooh, that's really good. I'm not really a porter fan, but it is really good. It is a, the coffee is definitely there. Mm. It's very rich. I mean, it's, it's thick, like a Guinness. It's very thick. And you can definitely taste the wood that we put in there. And it's nice and thick. I can't wait for it to have some carbon. It has a little bit of carbonation right now, not a lot. So let's get this stuff bottled. And uh, we just raised, I'll show you guys here, we just raised the bottle up, it's getting empty, so we put it on a pot just to give it some more gravity feed. Okay you guys, we have reached the bottom of our bottle here, if you guys can see in there, it's a little blurry. That's the stick, that's the wood stick. We've got all these, well not those three, all of these bottles are full. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to cap them. And then we're going to stir them up a little bit so the sugar gets mixed through. And then we're going to store them. So we're going to clean this up a little bit to make some room. We'll show you the capping process. What we have here is a recycled beer bottle uh, with the label scraped off here. It's about 90% full. We're then going to use a brand new cap. You can buy these online or at the beer store, whatever. It fits on here like this. You just set it on there. We have a crimping tool. The cap fits in here. And then what happens is it claws down around the neck and then it snaps it on. So we put this on here like this and then we just pop it down. There you go. And you, f it, you feel it pop. And then you pop it out. And it's good to go. Here you go. Okay. We also have these power drink things that we had from before and they have a screw top cap and it's nice because it has a plastic liner in here so when we put these on and we seal them we know they are sealed all the way down it feels tight and it feels airtight and then since it has the sugar in here we're going to be doing this to all of these we give it a little mix 
it's not carbonated right now. So we give it a mix because we want to mix up the sugar and eventually the yeast will eat that and then this will become carbon carbonated. And then we also have these which came from a beer kit. These are a plastic bottle, you guys can see it's squeezy. They came with their own lids like a soda bottle. These are easy, you just put them on like so. Give it a shake, get your sugar mixed up. And then we showed you these already. These really nice bottles are about six dollars. About six to seven dollars at the beer store. They're reusable. They have this nice uh, mechanical thing on here. And then we want to make sure we get those shaken up too. Okay, we're going to finish doing all this up and then I'll do a little wrap up for you guys. Okay, go for it. This is the delicious part. Push it through the water. There you go. You gotta clean your tools afterwards, so. Besides that, it's fun. Okay, final part on this segment is called clean your area and clean your tools. So you guys, we've cleaned all the extra stuff here, all the tools. We even sparkled the bottle and made it good. And then over there, of course, is all our beer. He he, and we're putting stuff away. So the next segment is we're gonna do a tasting in two weeks. See you then. It is the moment you've been waiting for. Beer in a cold mug. Okay guys, we got beer sealed. Got a nice icy mug. So let's give it a little pop here. Where is my opener? Found my opener. All right, let's give it a test. So here's the test. It's gonna, it's gotta make the noise. Remember the carbonation? Oh, did you hear it? I heard it. All right, cap down. Let's give it a nice, luscious pour for you. Can you see that? It's nice and icy cold. Nice and thick. Nice and rich. Nice and dark. It looks like. A root beer it's so thick let me unice a little bit there for you you can see there nice and rich all right let's give it a taste mmm wow you can really taste all the ingredients in this it's not super hoppy we didn't go super hoppy on this one so it's got a nice a nice rich darkness to it you can taste the coffee you can definitely taste the um, the extra toastedness to it. You can taste the cocoa. It's all in there. Wow, this is really thick and rich. If you guys like Guinness, this is the perfect recipe for you. Um, I would say it's a little bit lighter in flavor than Guinness, and maybe not quite such a meal, but definitely pretty good here. I'm trying to let you guys see defrosted a little bit. There you go. Now you can see there. All right, give another taste. I know what I'm doing my Sunday afternoon. Cheers. Oh, I forgot to tell you. We're also eating a special dish here today. It's a red bean with sausage on quinoa to go with our porter. Very Eastern European. Hope you guys have a good Sunday. Cheers. Bye. Hope you guys enjoyed how to make this beer. A nice dark porter style beer with cocoa nibs and coffee. Uh, what else to tell you? Hope you guys try this. I know it was probably a long video getting here, but if you're into brew making, this is definitely something you should try out. Very good. I'm Robert Jones. You guys can find me everywhere as Unimonious Mark II, E U D A E M O N I U S, Mark II, I I, or you can find on hashtag Your Everyday Santa. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, pass it along, share it, do all that kind of good stuff. Thanks, you guys. Hope you have a good one. Bye. Thank you.